the thing is, like, I don't think I could, like, copy that if I tried, because, I mean, I know exactly how to do it, like, like this shaver, this razor. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, obviously, this would be kind of heavy, but you would have to focus directly on it, you would actually have to visual, vis that, visually imagine it inside your brain, you actually have to visually imagine it, and focus both of those images directly so that they overlap, and you have to th literally throw your emotions into that object, and then, you know, use your emotions to throw it. I recall you telling me that before. And I don't even remember her name, just to be honest. I don't even know if uh, I can even pronounce it, let alone even say it. Saying it and pronouncing it is the same thing, dude. But I remember every, like all the other, you know, students calling her Aya. You know, as a as a nickname. And she was uh, su uh <sighs> Swedish. I'm guessing they call her Aya because of Parasite Eve. No, Aya was a uh, her middle name. They could not pronounce her. Uh oh. Name. But they all called her Aya. And she was a Swedish uh, foreign exchange student um, that came to our school. And she had the ability, and she physically proved it. She was actually in class, and she actually took her note. She was really strong with this, too. She knew how to do it perfectly. And she took her topic keeper, her five-star topic keeper, on her desk, stepped back about four or five feet, and she focused on that thing. She levitated that thing about an inch off the table and threw it at the wall. Mm. We all witnessed it. She, she actually taught us how to do that. I still remember um, Cody McCoy, one of the students, ended up Oh, getting, man, that douchebag. He ended up getting hit in the head with the apple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, you should tell him the story. Oh, that, that was funny. Um, I forget who... Oh, uh, who... Okay, yeah. okay, okay. So me and Tim have been best friends for a long time, right? Well, in school, um, like, I, like, I wasn't there when this happened, but, um, yeah, um, it was on a day that I wasn't there, but, uh, Cody was always making fun of me and Tim, and he was always calling us gay and stuff, and one day when I wasn't there, um, <laughs> You know, one day when I wasn't, you know, one day when I wasn't there, Cody was, like, making fun of Tim. He said something like, hey, where's your gay lover, or something like that. And Tim, and according to Tim, he said, oh, you don't have to be jealous of me and Dustin, Cody. I'm sure you'll find a man out there for you someday. <laughs> Dude, that made him And it, it apparently pissed him off so much that he broke a hole in the teacher's door. And the next day, I was there, and I saw a hole in the door, so... I remember how big it was? Yeah. I think it got, like, what was it, suspended for, like, two weeks? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that was probably, like, the best insult that you've ever given to anyone. I, I still remember Leanna when she... Like, you trolled him so hard with that. But yeah, let's just let's just say that this this guy had problems. He had more problems than me. But I still remember Leanne trying to do the telekinetic thing. She ended up hitting her uh, boyfriend uh, in the head with the apple. Sad to say, her boyfriend, her husband, um, had a car accident and uh, mm -hmm. ended up getting hit by a tanker. Motorcycle accident. Okay, this room's kind of hard. But, yeah. And I think I actually scared uh, the J 
gym teacher uh, at one point because we were out playing uh, dodgeball at one point and I think like what was her name? I'm trying to remember her name. Jess, Jess, Jessica, I think. Either Jess or Jessica. And she wanted to ask him about something. I forget what it was, but it was during the game. And we were all dodging the. Okay, I know this is gonna sound like a pun, dodging the balls. But um, she had her back turned, and you know, and all of a sudden I felt something, like not physically or you know goosebumps or anything. I mean, like had a feeling. By instinct, I get right in front of her, and I get. Slammed in the back of the head, almost knocked me out cold. Oh! I hate these little precise, perfect jumps that I have to do. I mean, that was okay, but man, that actually hurt. It almost knocked me out cold. No! Oh, man, that top part looks so easy, too. If I could just get up there, I'd be golden. Ooh. That came out of nowhere. Like, you have to jump, like, the very moment that the bottom pixel of your foot touches the platform. Whoa. Ugh. It almost feels like I have to press jump, like, before I even touch the platform. It feels that precise. The thing that was actually supposed to hold the bucket while it fell... YES! ...was just not... ...was not... Okay. ...falling. Try again. Just try again. Remember how I tried to teach you how to use abilities like that? Mm-hmm. I failed. Stop! Ah! I hit shift too fast! No, I mean, like, not telekinetic abilities, but I mean, like, actually using your sixth sense to feel things around you. Well, I can do that. I do have sixth sense about stuff like that. Like, I can usually tell when someone's good or bad just by being around them. I have that ability. Dude, that's how I avoid, like, creepy bad people online. Uh, one ability. Like, like, seriously, I can, like, I can, I don't know what you'd call that, but, you know. That would be... Uh, perception? No, intuition? E extrasensory perception would be having the ability to actually sense things, like, all around. Both literally and metaphorically. That's what I have. Uh, this is really, really starting to get on my nerves. Not you, I mean this room. I, I hate this crap. I think what you have is... Uh, I bet the next room is just going... Also, dude, it's something that a lot of people have, I think, because my granny has it too. Uh, Basically, it's like whenever someone is like, you know, whenever someone is like a bad kind of person that you're not supposed to be socializing with, or whenever someone has like evil intentions, like you feel it. I get like a chill down my spine. I feel like really bad inside. You know, there's something in the subconscious. And I know a lot of people uh, don't really know this. I don't remember what his name was, but when I was hanging out with uh, my mom's cousin, uh, uh, what was his freaking name? I never remember names from now on for some reason. Weird. Who knows how stuff like that works. Maybe, but, it's, maybe it's God telling us and warning us stuff. Yeah, but I do believe in God. I'm not afraid to say that. And I know that he does give signs and give warnings. And Seth! Why you 
do this? I remember seeing that picture. Yeah. Also, why do I keep... No, I know why I keep goofing up there. It's because it's such a low ceiling. It, it's difficult for me to... Like, I'm good at this down here, but for some reason it's really difficult for me to judge up there. Like, hey, I am getting better. Hang on. Jump. Jump up! Ah! Dunked it in the toilet about four or five times and then placed it back into his locker. <laughs> yeah, I remember you telling me that story. Yes! Yes! <sighs> okay. Uh. What is this? Is this the horrible? Is this the supposed... Is this the supposed horrible room? Okay, wait. Oh, do I have to do what I think I have to do? I do, don't I? I have to jump back. I wonder how much uh, you can bench press. I don't know. I got no idea. To be honest, by looking at you, it looks like you can bench 440. <laughs> Honestly, he looks stronger than me. <laughs> oh, man. Hold on, can I, like, jump up and fall back down in there? Okay, so after that I gotta hop over there, then I gotta go down that shaft, and then I gotta go left, and that... You know, I'm sure there's something going to pop out of that thing down there. I don't know what, maybe one of those weird fish things. I don't see how I could possibly avoid that, seeing as I wouldn't be able to hop back, but, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just there to, like, wig me out. Maybe it's just there to make me think I'm going to have to do that. You know what would be a really, um, cool add-on for the stylus? What? Actually, so, like, a little thing that you can attach it to your thumb, so that way, like, if you're playing or something, like, you don't actually have to switch stylus with, with one hand and control the, uh, the character with the other. See what you mean about the style, the gyro controls. Wait, how far are you? Uh, to the first giant fight. You don't even use gyro controls in the first giant fight. No, but I've been using that Luigi-nary uh, moves. Mm -hmm. They're a little wonky. <laughs> no, they're not. The Luigi-nary... The Luigi-nary moves don't have any problems. It's just the giant battles that have a problem. I never had a problem with the Luigi-nary attacks. It was just... It was the fourth and fifth giant battles that gave me problems. So, wow, this room is a dick. You know what's funny? His brother is called Mario, and yet they're called Mario Brothers, so doesn't that make him Mario Mario? You know, um, another friend of mine told... Oh wait, I see what's gonna pop out of that. It's gonna be one of those bear trap things, but um... You know, uh, someone, uh, one of my friends told me something funny the other day. It made me laugh. Don't be racist. Be like Mario. He's an he's an Italian plumber created by Japanese people who speaks English and looks like a Mexican. Oh! <laughs> oh! Okay, that's bad. He found that on iFunny apparently, so it's someone else's joke. But yeah, it had me laughing because it's true. He's like, he's like four races in one. It was funny, 
I can speak Italian, and I can't even understand half the crap that comes out of Mario or Luigi's mouth. I think it's just gibberish. I don't think it's supposed to actually be anything. Yes, 
his head, his skull is his weak point. Raging 
Boner is enthralled by Jessica. <laughs> oh, that's bad. Dude, do you think they would get into legal trouble for that? Because, I mean, like, even I know that every enemy that they have in the, in the <sighs> series is always a bad pun. Mm -hmm. It's always a bad pun on, on, his, on his own name. Yes! That was easy. That was actually a really easy boss. That was way easier than Geezer. I re it's really hard to say if they'll get into legal trouble for that. I don't know, man, but I think that's enough recording for now. What am I going to say? It, it saves automatically. Okay, before we go, I will say, yeah, stage four. Um, This is... Well... See, before, um, before Seth was making I Want to Be the 8-Bit, he was making another game called 8-Bit Fighter. And this was actually, well, not this in particular, but this type of stage. It's like a space station. This space station area was like the very first level of 8-Bit Fighter, and he never really went further with it than that. But, yeah. That's from Star Fox. Yeah, it is. I, it is, I think. I recognize but, that from the heavy metal remix that one guy made. I have that on my iPod. You know, the the guy said um, some something about his friend on the yeah. drums. Where is your? I forget where that's from, but I have that. On I think my I iPod. remember that. Yeah. But yeah, I think he said that he's like he's basically kind of turning I want to be the eight bit and eight bit fighter into one game, as in he's like merging ideas from both into one. And that's why I want to be the 8-bit suddenly became more difficult. I don't know if I said that, but yeah, he kind of told me that. He told me that, you know, he decided to kind of combine both ideas, and that's why I want to be the 8-bit suddenly became a more difficult game rather than a game focused on humor and silliness like it was originally supposed to be. Like Conker's Bad Fur Day. Yeah. Anyway, with that, see you guys. Later.